my style is a little bit of, uh, of jazz age. There's that old Harlem feel. I sort of like the fits of my clothes um, a bit looser. My trousers are up to here. My lapels are wider. And that's just the start. Then there are the socks, the sock garters, the armbands, the vest, the pocket watch, the boutonniere, and eventually a check in the mirror. When I feel put together is when I feel most comfortable. And he never leaves home without a hat. He goes by the stage name Dandy Wellington, but this is no act. Will I ever bump into you in sweatpants and a t-shirt? No. I will never see you. No. see me. <laughs> Sorry. And as his name implies, Dandy Wellington is one of a rare breed of men for whom dressing well is not just a hobby, but a lifestyle. What is a dandy? The definition that we took for our book, which is a man obsessed with personal elegance. Writer Nathaniel Adams and photographer Rose Callahan spent five years studying these unconventional but impeccably clad men for their book, I Am Dandy. With dandies, it's their whole being. It, they couldn't exist any other way. If they were on a desert island, they'd polish their shoes with squid ink and you know, they'd use a fishbone as a tie pin. Think Oscar Wilde, journalist Gay Talese, or screen legend Fred Astaire. But who else? George Clooney, a dandy? No. no. How about director John Waters? Yes, I think he's a dandy. One of my favorites, Justin Timberlake. <laughs> um, I think he might be a little too fashionable. You know, he's, he's always changing his style. Is Willy Wonka a dandy? <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say, yeah. I'd, I'd, yeah, I'd I'll go to, ahead and say sure. I'd have to see Willy Wonka's closet. And then there's New York City attorney Edward Hayes. They're entitled to a fair trial. Everybody's entitled to a shot in life, and so are these guys. And if anybody doesn't like it, they go to hell. All we caught work, up with him at Beckenstein's right, Bespoke. Let's pull a couple of samples. With his longtime tailor and friend, Jonathan I'm Boyarski. Like the forward point with the button down. Mm -hmm. So, true or false, I, there's a rumor that you refuse to wear a bulletproof vest. Oh, that's true. <laughs> that story, I went, what happened was I represent a guy who beats his wife to death. Terrible, terrible man. I go to his house with the cops. The cop says, pull on a bulletproof vest. I said, no way. <laughs> said, because oh, it's going to rumple your suit? It'll, it'll, fit, it'll ruin the fit of my suit. And if the TV stations show up, I'll look terrible. I said, I'm not wearing a bulletproof vest. That's it. In 1987, another dandy, author Tom Wolfe, dedicated his classic Bonfire of the Vanities to Hayes. I have a big thing for women's shoes. I like to buy women's shoes. I right. really do. They're gorgeous, They right? are gorgeous. I represented some very um, expensive call girl rings. And... I used to go shopping with them all the time. You know, they were making a lot of money and they'd bring me along for style advice. <laughs> Hayes has a classical style. Other dandies are into vintage menswear. Some are more fashion forward. And then there are the just plain eccentric. But the father of modern dandyism was socialite Beau Brummel of 19th century England. Dressing well was still involved powdered wigs and lots of jewels and brocaded silks and, and really flamboyant stuff. What Bill Brummel did was he um, basically slimmed everything down. He basically created what we now recognize as the suit. There are some pretty great legends yeah. about him. There's the rumor that he shined his boots with champagne. Really? Um, <laughs> he probably didn't, but he <laughs> certainly did nothing to quash that rumor. However, the actual word dandy has been around for much longer, immortalized in song and film. I'm a Yankee Doodle dandy. Yankee Doodle do or die. In the American Revolution, obviously, the British troops were professional soldiers. They had immaculate uniforms. They were very well put together. The American rebels were wearing whatever was on their back. And the British liked to make fun of them for being slovenly, for being uncultured. Um, so they sang the song, Yankee Doodle Dandy. So the, even the words itself, Yankee Doodle Dandy, it's kind yeah, of just, exactly. you know, it's, really a put down. Exactly. And as for how American men dress today, what do you think of the average guy on the street? How do you think well, guys dress? Well, first of all, he's fat. That's the first problem is they don't keep in shape. You can't look good if you don't keep yourself healthy. But the average guy in the street doesn't care, and it shows. So guys take note. 
Clothes don't just make the man, they make a difference, a real difference. Oh, 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 oh.